you know, I gave my girlfriend for her birthday the sex day pasture Tony Robbins deep with destiny. And let's be honest, it was like Homer Simpson giving Marge the baseball for her birthday. But I did get under the justification that, because she's an actor, it was probably a good idea that she understood what was driving her, and that is Tony Robbins' most deep program that he does. And, you know, that's really hard when you're competing with things such as wealth mastery and ultimate business mastery. (laughs) But, well, there's other ones that are as well. Anyway, she wanted me to come along to it, and I did not want to go because I was scared of how deep that rabbit hole went. You know what I learned as a result, though? My God, what a genius marketing strategy that man has. Because... As I've said before, just for any new listeners, I know the rest of you are sick and tired of listening to it, but fuck you. This is my Kyle Sandlands being homeless story. It was when I was very aimless as a 19-year-old and I was walking through the library and I saw that open copy of Unlimited Power. Might have been waking to giant with you, I can't remember now. Anyway, one of them, read it, changed my life. I owe everything that I have to that man. That man was there. I had no role models as a kid. Everyone around me was a druggo, let's be honest. Um, My family was a broken, poor, disturbed family. And I was an only child. I really didn't have much going for me. That book showed me the way. Anybody who is disparaging of Tony Robbins, I take as a personal affront because he has given me so much and I've never met the guy and he'll never meet me. But the reason that I go to his programs now when everyone says, oh my God, it's such a waste of money. I don't think that you understand the mentality of the people that are there. Well, it's half, half. Half of the people that are there are a bunch of housewives from doctors that go, yeah, yeah, honey, just fix yourself. There you go, here's 10 grand. But the other... I can see it. You can see it in their body. They're me. They're a bunch of lost people that came from terrible backgrounds that really didn't have a way out. Okay, I'll give them all this. They had the intention that they wanted the way out. But that was the manual. Tony Robbins created the manual for it. And I know I'm sounding like a devout religious cultist, and I am a devout religious cultist of the cult of Tony Robbins. Just because it's a cult doesn't mean it's not beneficial. But that's why I'm constantly recommending that you read those books. That is, first and foremost, when everyone ever says, what do I read? I don't want to hear that question until you've read Unlimited Power and Awaken the Giant Within. Now, what happens is, those books teach you, like I do, sign up to Jordan Shanks and my official Patreon to get weekly reminders because I know that you're too lazy to read these books. Sign up, and I'll give you all the dates anyway. But what happened is, I started... You get to the phase where... All the goals that you wrote down, having gone through his program that you get for free because it's from the library and you don't have the money for it, whatever, you get to the point where you actually do achieve those goals and you go further. But something's still missing inside. And that's what Date with Destiny is all about. So isn't that an incredible business model? He almost gives his material out for free or very, very little, 20 bucks for a book. You become successful and then he harvests your success for even more money (laughs) for huge amounts of money and you know what i love him for it it's incredible seeing that man in real life or you know via zoom but it was just he's got this peak song that comes out every time i think it's lions in the wild by martin garrix or whatever his name is and then he just comes out after they force you to do jumping jacks for, I don't know, 10 minutes. And then just be like, now that you're in a peak state, ladies and gentlemen, Tony Robbins. And then this music goes, yes, everybody get up and jump. He is the greatest man to have ever lived. I don't want to hear another word about it. Yes, he's better than Gandhi. Yes, he's better than Da Vinci. Have any of them taught you how to be ultimately successful? No, they kind of just sat down. That was Gandhi's whole shtick. Mm. I could do that. I couldn't do what Tony does. I couldn't be jumping up and down for six straight days as a 62-year-old man. He looks better than me. He's just this huge giant that sits there and can make people cry within two sentences and then fix their life in about 30 minutes and then gets you up and makes you do more jumping. 
It was an incredible experience. Both Drew and I feel that we're closer as a couple as a result of it, but also, this is the other thing as well. This is what I will say about the entire program. Something deep within me shifted. Deep. I do not see the world. This, this is nothing. All the self-help books that I've ever read in my life. A lot of it, I've got to say, although it's extremely beneficial, whatever material aesthetic desire you will have, that will get fulfilled. When it comes to the deep stuff, though, it does help. It gives you the identities but it's nothing like being immersed in an environment where you are forced to focus on it for six days straight in a peak state. Now, I will say that obviously my worldview is very different to what it was when it was 19, but that festering thing in the... Okay, let, let me just let me actually just say what that festering hot coal inside me personally was. I think that you can guess, obviously, from what I'm doing right now. But... Having come from that environment where I definitely wasn't going to be getting any praise from my parent, and I won't be going into the depths of it, but let me just summarize it like this. I unequivocally had a bad childhood. As a result of that, because I wasn't going to be getting any acceptance from the parent in question, And because I had that natural skill of being able to perform a little better than the other kids in my year, I started to equate getting acceptance from crowds. Now, this also plays into the fact that whenever I'm in parties, I'm always, this is my general response to parties. Lame, that sucks. It's not me in front of a crowd of strangers and they're all laughing. (laughs) This is lame. I'm going to focus on that. And that I cannot stress. If you look at my values, which is what you write, you write down in Date With Destiny, what your values are and what's driving you, what you're moving away from. When you write those down, you couldn't not be a successful comedian with those. I don't care about anyone's approval except the approval of the crowd. I need a bunch of strangers in front of me clapping like seals for me to feel good for even a second. Uh, not good. I can force myself to feel good in the moment all the time because of all of these tricks that I've had. But that underlying what is actually driving me, what makes me make the decisions that I make in a day-to-day life is pretty much just that, is that when I was a kid, I equated acceptance with the acceptance of a crowd of strangers. If that is the way that you get love and connection in life, What's going to happen to you? You are going to start selling out, sold out to us because it is an inherent human need that you have. It is also the reason that I am able to spend days, months, lockdown, flew by, didn't even notice it, no difference to my life whatsoever. It was exactly the same as my day-to-day life. And it is because my entire life is getting enough material to get in front of a crowd so that they clap, so that I feel some form of connection. Other than that, don't really feel it. I definitely do with my friends and family, but the thing is that I will always prioritize those strangers clapping over everything else. That was because I connected that up as a kid. Now, I had little glimpses of that because of self-help, but it never really drove into me how deep that actually was, what the actual consequences of it were. Of course I was gonna have the life that I had. Of course I was gonna have that kind of life. If that is what's driving you, and this is what's really interesting, whatever is that primary way that you are seeing the world, as Tony Robbins says, your primary question, whatever way you, whatever you are constantly asking yourself to fill up one of those childhood needs, your life is predetermined going to move that way. Now. You can write out your goals, but here's the interesting thing. I think that when you write out your goals, your goals will be trying to fill whatever that need is. It dictates your entire life. So what was the result of that? 
then you have to write down what is good and what is bad about it. And see, even when I'm thinking about it now, I'm like, kind of choking up. And you can feel it as well because it's the same thing with two, for instance. Hers, because she was from an Asian family, obviously, firstborn child in an Asian family, what is it? To constantly impress her parents. That's why there's so many Asians that are such high achievers, I think, anyways, because they come from families where family approval is extremely important. They actually do give out approval, and so they become this endless machine seeking endless stars and merit certificates their entire life. They need a constant reinforcement of, congratulations, you got 99%, which is why they usually move into the corporate world, because the corporate world just... You know, it's, it's pretty much just a reflection of, yeah, you did that. Now you get to move up to junior partner, right? With me, for instance, if I am constantly looking for approval and the only place that I felt that I found approval, and I think it was also the fact that I was an only child and the fact that I had an insane parent. And so I learned to not think about or even, I really kind of just blocked out any kind of approval from anyone else. I was really looking for approval from the crowd, from that crowd of strangers. I still think about it now, but see, this is the whole thing. What that created, and it's the same thing with two, for instance, is it created a life of permanent dissatisfaction. Now, that permanent dissatisfaction has its advantages. As I've said in this self-help series before, if you have dissatisfaction in life, you are going to be successful. People who are satisfied are going to be extremely happy with life, but they aren't going to be successful. You kind of have to figure out a way to harness the drive. It's kind of like, seeing as June's just come out, the whole point is to try and turn the desert planet into a garden planet with that one desert area where they can make their young go through trials there so that they can maintain the strength of the Fremen. That is what you're trying to aim for in life, is that planet being you. You are trying to make most of it a lush garden and a little part of it in the center, this area that you can go through to drive so that you can move your life forward. And I think I've never been closer to that as a result of this. But anyway, both of us, I think, are very high achievers and we are very high achievers because we are constantly dissatisfied. What is the, if you ask anybody that comes to me on one of my tours, I usually bring one of my friends and they just help me get to places, right? If you ask them, I will get off stage, and I'm not even bragging at this point. It's just a simple fact. I'm that good. But I do think that if that is your primary question in life, and you have spent 30 years trying to figure out how to please a crowd, you're good at pleasing a crowd. So on my shows, there will be people, I get this all the time from venue managers, they'll come out and they'll say, you get a better response than some rock stars that come here. You're up there with rock stars. You're able to elicit that response out of the crowd because I'm constantly searching for their approval. How do I get more of their approval? How do I get more of their approval? That is the primary question that is going off in my mind. So as a result of that, I think that I'm very, very good at doing it. But here's the thing. When I walk off stage, sometimes I'll feel a level of fulfillment if it was a 10 out of 10 show. I'll feel a brief level of fulfillment where I'll actually feel at one and I'll feel myself and I'll feel very naturally inherently comfortable because I've filled up that level of desire that I need, right, in, in terms of connection. I've got that level of connection that other people just feel when they go out to a family lunch. I get that level of feeling from that, yeah? If I get a 9 out of 10 show, if I get a 7 out of 10, if I get a 5 out of 10 show, the audience doesn't know that it's a 5 out of 10. You'll hear this all the time from comedians because they've gotten to that point where anything that they put out is just going to be a cut above what anybody else is putting out. So everybody else goes out feeling satisfied. And I will walk out of those shows and they'll say, yeah, you killed it. There's an indistinguishable difference between the crowds. But I'll be sitting there and I'll be extremely dissatisfied and I'll be going through the entire show and I'll think like, what was wrong? What was wrong with the presentation? What was wrong with the joke work here? Those are the things that start running off in my heart. When, when I'm, whenever there's a video that comes out, You'll ask anybody that works with me. It's the most frustrating thing that they'll ever ask. They'll, they'll tell you about working with me. If it bombs, I sit there and I'm just beating myself up about it. If it does really well, what's the first question in my mind? Oh, I didn't get to a million. How do we get to make it go to a million? It's endless. That's what I'm saying about the question. It is endless. And as a result of that, I've got to say, even though I can pump myself up in the moment and I know how to do that, it has robbed me of a lot of moments in my life. The reason that I sit in this room by myself all day, every day, is I'm trying to figure out, not even the videos, the videos is kind of just to funnel people into the show 
And why am I trying to funnel them into the show so I can get that applause? That's all I'm looking for in life. <laughs> and so as a result, as anyone will tell you, it's very hard for them to convince me to leave this room. And it's always, people always say, oh, it's because of agoraphobia, it's a social phobia. It's not, it's not. I, was, I never knew why I was trying to fill that need. But now I know. I know that it was because I was, and, and still am obviously, but it, it wasn't out of a place of fear. It wasn't out of a place of, oh, what will people think of me? No, it was out of impressing that crowd. <laughs> Do you like this tap dance, mommy? Isn't that creepy that it's just these people that I've never met before? You're my mommy. That's what I'm really thinking, right? Anyway, that's what I'm talking about. That's how deep this programming goes. And if you'd like to know how to fix that, you're going to have to sign up to my Patreon. No, but like, look, I'm not going to share that information because I don't think that that's fair on Tony Robbins. He spent his entire life doing that. And that is extreme work. But I do think that one day, and God, this is how much of a convert he is. Not only does he make you successful so that you pay exorbitant amounts of money to see him, but he also makes you such a raving convert that he makes you create a self-help channel so that he, you can basically advertise him. But I don't even want to do my sign up to Jordan Shanks Patreon here. I don't even want to do it. I might put an Amazon affiliation. No, I won't even do that. I just want the man to have some money and I just want two things out of you. If you can't afford a Tony Robbins book, that's fine. Go to the library and get it. If you can afford it, get it. Get his book. Anyway, I think I'm just going to have to leave it at that.